migrating to, to Spain, I was thinking, such a lovely weather, why do you go to Spain on holidays? It's, <laughs> it's wonderful. Uh, I was, seriously, I was thinking about internationalism and solidarity among peoples, and these past couple of days that I've been here in the UK, I couldn't stop thinking about the British men and women who went to my country, to Spain in the 30s, to fight for democracy against the forces of fascism in the International Brigade, those 2,500 here. Men and women, while the European governments decided to look the other way, when there, many of them left, lost their lives in Spain. But here today, I couldn't begin if not by expressing my tribute and the, the, the deep gratitude of the Spanish Democrats to those heroes who came to fight alongside us. What a heavy price we paid for that loss. Not only in terms of the noble lives that were lost, but my country, as you know, ensued afterwards 40 years of dictatorship, a very difficult transition to democracy, and a very late integration into the European project. And you know, for the Spanish Democrats fighting against the dictatorship, Europe was then a synonym, a synonym of the civil and political liberties that we didn't have in a dictatorship. It was a synonym, a symbol of progress, of the aspiration for social justice, of uh, the democracy that we didn't have. It was a synonym of that welfare state, like the one you have here, that was a dream for those fighting for workers' rights, for, for women's rights, for environmental rights. That model of society where there is a certain balance between capital and labor, where there is a fair tax system that allows for a certain redistribution of wealth, where there are strong unions and strong public health, education, and pension systems, a society, a model of society, where the dignity of our existence depends on the dignity of all, especially of those who have <coughs> the least. Europe was, ab above everything, a synonym of peace of a project of fraternity, of cooperation among peoples that was aimed at making wars like the one we had lost impossible. Europe was the symbol, the synonym of a space of rights, of everything we lacked, of that aspiration of, for progress, for liberty, for equality, for fraternity, so that, you know, the generation of my parents and after that my generation grew up uh, looking up to that ideal of Europe as a space of rights, a space of democracy, a space for the aspiration to social justice. Now, it is obvious, it is evident, otherwise we wouldn't ha uh, be having this conversation, that Europe is not that space anymore. The European Union today is at the avant-garde of a systematic operation to dismantle precisely those very basic principles the social rights, you know, the, a society uh, that, that has these safety networks that guarantee that no matter where you have been born, no matter how much money your parents have, you will be entitled to have a minimum of social rights that guarantee that you will have a life in decency. After the crisis of 2008, a crisis that was caused, and we have to remind everybody of this all the time, it wasn't caused by the people. It wasn't caused by the workers, it was caused by a criminal, deregulated financial sector, by a billionaire class who keep acting in total impunity today, and that after they may crash the, the whole system, uh, they, 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 they forced the bill upon us. And they forced a bill. And they forced a bill that was to be paid, that was to be paid with our rights with rights that were conquered through the struggles of generations. The elites in the European Union, acting in cooperation with most of our governments, have betrayed those fundamental ideals of the European project, have betrayed the fundamental values that give a meaning to that project of cooperation and integration. And what has the, what has the result been of that operation for dismantling our rights? Everywhere in Europe, a rise in inequality, rise in poverty, rise in social exclusion, rise in these mechanisms of debt 
that are a form of modern slavery for people, for families, and for whole countries. And at the same time, what a coincidence, the rise of the extreme right in many European societies, the rise of racist, xenophobic, pre-authoritarian forces that remind us of the worst nightmares of our own history, precisely, precisely those nightmares that the British heroes of the International Brigade went to my country to fight against. That's the situation of Europe today. So, for someone coming from the south of Europe that I am not here today to gloss the virtues of the European Union today, of a European Union that is certainly not working in the interest of the people. So why am I here today? Am I, I am here to tell you that those values, the values of progress, of democracy, of social justice, of peace, of cooperation, are, are too precious to be left in the hands of the racists, of the opportunists, of the xenophobes, of the oligarchs that will, that will sell them uh, in order to serve their profits. That those rights, precisely because they are, those values, precisely because they are under attack today, are more necessary than ever. I am here today to tell you that if we don't give the fight for a different Europe now, the kind of society that we will live for the next generations we won't look at all like the kind of society that we imagine for them. I am here today to tell you that the big banks and the corporations and the multinationals and the fraudsters that have their money in tax havens and the oligarchs and their flows of capital, I am here to tell you that they do have an international alliance and that we need one too if we are to defeat austerity. <laughs> we will only together. And I am here to tell you one thing, that it is true what some of you know, the speakers in the other camp are saying. It is true. We need to recover our sovereignty. But not the sovereignty of the city of London. Not the sovereignty of the racists and the xenophobes. Popular sovereignty. The sovereignty of the people, which is equal to democracy and to social rights. That is the sovereignty that we have to take back in our hands. to tell you that that fight in order to recover popular sovereignty, to fight for democracy, which is not only a system of election going to, vote, to deposit a ballot every four years, democracy requires a material basis of social rights, the conditions of dignity that allow someone to be a citizen. That fight, we cannot give it alone. Not a, a, a people, a lonely people, one people alone will not be able to stand the ground on its own. Why? Because the adversaries have that international alliance. So, if there is one final thing that I am here to tell you, is that things are changing too in Europe. Just three days after you vote in your referendum, we will have the general election in Spain. And Podemos, a party that didn't exist two years ago, a party that was born without resources, without money, with all the establishment against us, with all the media apparatus against us, with all the other parties in the state against us. Podemos, that party that is full of young, decent people, people who came from the streets, people who came from struggles that looked impossible to win at the beginning, but that once they are won, they seem inevitable. Uh, that party, according to all the polls, is in a position where we could actually win the elections in Spain and have, and, have, and have in our country a patriotic government. Patriotic government. Because a patriotic government is one who puts people before profits, is one who defends its own people no matter where they have been born. It's a, it's a, it's a government that puts social rights and that puts the conditions of dignity of the life of its own population before of any other interest, and certainly, certainly, before the interest of the financial sector, the big bank that we have had to rescue, and, and which are the reason why we have the, the economic problems that we have now. So I am here to tell you that you can count on us to build together that different Europe, a Europe that recovers its essence, the essence of its values, 
and that makes austerity a thing of the past, but I am here to tell you as well that we count on you, that we need you to win this country, that we need you to help change the correlation of forces in Europe, because what is at stake is the very, the very essence of our living together, the very essence of neighborhood and cooperation and fraternity and peace. What is at stake is the possibility of fighting for a democratic, popular, sovereign Europe that is worthy of that name. So we count on you. Thank you very much. We shall overcome Benjeremos.